name is Austin Amara, and I would like to share with you all my research on climate change and what the future may look like for us. To begin, what is climate change anyway? Well, climate change is a very broad term that is used to describe the long-term changes and trends relative to weather patterns, temperatures, and other indicators when considering the Earth's systems as a whole. There are also a concept called microclimates. These are more specific regions or patterns, but we're not going to cover these in the presentation. I just wanted to note that they do exist. Why does climate change matter and how does this affect us? Well, changes in climate have large scale effects on everything. Us as humans interact with and deal with the consequences of emissions, a concept we'll touch on later today, every single day. Animals have been experiencing an unprecedented mass extinction, far faster than any previously. And the future of our planet is at stake because of it. What the Earth looks like and how life interacts with itself could be drastically different in the coming years. I have collected here a few samples of changing climates that we are experiencing in full force at this very second. Here is a photo of melting polar ice caps. This leads to more water being poured into the oceans, which in turn raises global sea levels. As you can see here, since 1880, our seas have risen almost 10 inches and show no signs of stopping anytime soon. Millions of people live in at-risk locations. They're close to the coastlines. For example, these residents here in Florida have no idea what the future may hold for their real estate and their houses. Raising sea levels are not the only common natural disaster. Instead of showing you the exponential increase in the frequency of hurricanes, I figured I would just show you the damage. Take a look at the devastation that Hurricane Katrina had on America's Gulf Coast. As you can see here very clearly, climate change truly affects humans, animals, and the future of our world as a whole. Please help us. I believe that's very fitting. Okay, so when did this all start? When did our first, excuse me, when did our spe species first notice this thing called climate change? Well, my research conducted proved that Joseph Fourier was, the, was a French mathematician and he was a physicist as well. His research on how the Earth's atmosphere retains heat would later be known as the greenhouse effect. Moving on to James Kroll, a Scottish scientist that noticed certain materials and colors, such as dark soil or rock, absorb heat, unlike lighter surfaces such as snow or ice, which reflect heat. He also began to piece together the effects all of this had on the air and the ocean's currents. And finally, on the right, we have John Tyndale, who was an Irish-English scientist who studied the effects of different gases, such as water vapor, carbon dioxide, which was then known as carbonic acid, ozone, and hydrocarbons. He noticed they were able to absorb and transmit radiant heat. There are countless other scientists and breakthroughs that have played a key role in knowing what we know today. But this is a look at some of the oldest contributions my research came up with. Where are we now? Prior to the Paris Agreement in 2014, which was a treaty signed by 192 states accounting for 98% of greenhouse gas emissions, our world looked doomed. We were destined to increase upwards of 4 degrees Celsius by the year 2100. Fortunately, the promises made by the nations have allowed for us to take a collective sigh of relief, as the new estimates propose that the world may only heat up somewhere between 2.5 to 3 degrees Celsius. Unfortunately, however, <laughs> the sigh of relief has to be very short-lived. Many of these promises from large emitters have yet to be backed by any actual change. The United States, India, and China are all struggling to keep their promises and reach carbon neutral in the next few decades, which would be a key determining factor in whether the Paris Agreement will be successful or not. A lack of fulfilling these promises may lead to higher increases in temperatures, which in turn would affect climate change even more substantially. It is very difficult to reach these Paris Agreement estimates, I'll be the first to admit. But on a more brighter note, there are countries who are trying to do their part to change. There are a number of countries who are actually almost reaching carbon neutral, and some of the bad players are actually doing their part as well. For example, China faces a ton of backlash for their environmental conditions, but they've started to realize change is necessary for their citizens. China produces 21 million consumer vehicles every year and nearly 5 million commercial vehicles every year. They are attempting to go fully electric with their fleet of vehicles by the year 2050, and they plan to have 80% of the cars on the roads electric by 2035. Personally, I was blown away by these estimates when I first heard them, but 
I think that it's very optimistic, and it was a refreshing note. These estimates seem super promising to me, and I do believe that these are needed to continue to propel the carbon neutral shift. These efforts are projected to reduce carbon emissions from LDVs to zero in emissions in the transport sector by 790 megatons of CO2 per year by 2050. So what now? We've talked about the devastation of climate change on our country, on the world, and on the world's people and animals. How can we save our planet from these devastations? There are a number of different methods, and I have written some of them down here. Fossil fuels. At this point, there is no reason new infrastructure should be built on an old energy source. Coal mining, oil fracking, and other outdated processes that deplete finite resources have lasting impacts. Changing current systems towards better means of energy consumption and perfecting the growth of these industries as a whole is a critical first step. Moving on to renewable energy sources. There are many methods of obtaining the needed amounts of energy for our needs as a species. Hydrothermal, solar, and even nuclear sources are all much safer and more efficient at scale. They also contribute far less pollution, allowing us to shake our need for modern day unrenewable sources. That will also open up the door to more sustainable transport. Millions of people are stuck in traffic, polluting the world every day. Ride a bike, take an electromagnetic train, carpool, anything. There are much more efficient and they pollute far less. Moving on to another consumer tendency, Better food consumption. This is needed. Factory farming is one of the single most culpable players in the emissions game. Ending these inhumane farms at scale is necessary. Even if you aren't willing to commit to being vegan, cut back on meat consumption and obtain locally and organic sourced meat when possible. This will allow us to start restoring nature. Restoring our planet, saving our oceans from massive amounts of plastic and stopping large-scale deforestation will have a lasting impact on our future. Prevention is necessary, but restoration is also a huge necessity as well. Volunteer work or donating to quality charities such as Team Seas or Team Trees can be a very effective stretch of your dollar. And finally here, another consumer tendency would be to reduce your waste. The average American produces nearly five times as much waste as the global average. There's no need for this. A metal straw is a great omen, I guess, but actually cutting down substantially on the amount of garbage we produce reusing plastic goods whenever possible, and not taking part in un unnecessary consumerism are all much better alternatives that have a real impact. And what's next after that? Well, everything I just said are things we can implement into our lives right now to help propel change while we have the momentum. Another thing you could do is call your local senators and tell them how you feel. Again, stop unnecessary waste. Go talk to your friends and your family about this today. The future of climate change is not a question of the future, it's a problem of the now. And we have the power to make the difference. I believe it's time we all take that step up. That's all folks. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation if you listened all the way through. And I've left some links here at the bottom of charities currently accepting donations to help prevent climate change if you are so inclined. Time for us to be the change we wish to see. And finally, here are my sources. Thank you.